All right, so let's take a look at Bitcoin right here. Um, we can see where we are. Uh, again, nothing has changed. We're looking to see for a break of this line right here and to see if we get the bigger movement down here. And I, I know it's huge, the amounts and so forth, but this is just the pattern that's there. And all the people that are trapped long have been probably buying from the 9,000 to all the way up to the 13,000, right? It's crazy. And they did this all within a short period of time, but the, the bigger money has been selling. They sold here, they sold here, there, there, and it's repeated over and over again. So as times go on, um, their, their selling is gonna have a net effect until it balances back out as it has in the past. Just like when they were buying down here, 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 and I was saying that they were buying, they've been selling over here, here, and here. <laughs> But we have good geometry and we're going to be looking for the bigger move down. And um, that's just what's in the chart. Uh, I can only trade what's in the chart. Now, do we have risk on this? Yes. We're in a singular um, account. Uh, my net position, uh, as I'm always long Bitcoin, I keep 20% of my equity in Bitcoin at all times, period. Um, so I'm net long. So I'm never really just selling in a, you know, a naked short. Um, I do want that to be clear. I'm always long. Uh, if we had the uh, 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 long account as well, I would be buying um, and hedging and playing, you know, trading both sides of it. But that's not a big deal. Uh, we can do that in the future. We've already discussed that, and we'll be looking to do that, um, as well as the Coinbase account. Um, you would notice that I would start off with a certain sum, and then as prices went up, I would sell portions of that and then as it went back down I would start buying it again and it's just repeating the same thing that I've always done over and over again but right now we're looking for it to break under this level down here in the uh, low 10,000 mid to low 10,000 range right around mid 10,000 now um, and once that occurs you'll get the higher end panic and whatnot as you can see People are freaking out right now because they're all trapped in this price here. And in reality, the BitMEX, uh, BitMEX the uh, Tether guys more than likely, have been selling into them. So they're just going to crush them. And they're going to cause all this panic. And, <laughs> and this is not unusual. I've seen this before in the past. We go back to the past. You know, I was a seller on naked short. I never was a naked short until... It, hit the 18,000 range where I was selling here. And it was only small amounts. I think it was like over 5% of my total equity. I didn't hold any Bitcoin, but I was naked short. And I actually sold it. And then we dropped all the way down to this first area down here into the 12,000, 11,000 range, and I became a buyer. And uh, you, if you remember uh, watching any of my videos in the past, I've repeated this over and over. Uh, back end highs here and here. Um, turn into resistance and so when we collapsed under there uh, that was looking for resistance uh, this is what I was looking for support back end lows and front end highs over here and so we had this area in here became a buyer and then we went back up to here you know the back end highs here high here and that became resistance then we drop all the way back down to here, small buy because there was a pattern that turned into resistance here and sold here. And then I was looking for this area down here. This is what I was interested in, the under 8,000 to 6,000 range. And then it went all the way back up to this level up to here, right? And then became a seller again and repeated this over and over. Now, back then we had nice ranges. We had, you know, it went up to uh, 19,000 range, all the way down to the 11,000 range. Think about that on a percentage basis. And it did it within a quick period of time. It did this within, you know, just a matter of weeks. And then it just took another matter of weeks here, and then another matter of weeks here. So we had great volatility. We don't have that right now. What did we get right now? We got kind of screwed in the sense that we get these tight ranges and then takes forever and ever. And then we get this stupid exaggeration that is just friggin' ridiculous. Like, who the fuck? What the fuck is this? But now we're getting the nicer ranges back. So we went up to the 13,000. Now we're up to the 
the mid 10,000 range, and we're looking to even break this area here, which will really cause panic. So it, I guess it's coming back. So the volatility is coming back. That'll be nice. Now, let's discuss the fact that do we have risk? Yes, of course we have risk. And um, oh, look at that. Let's see. Let's see if that breaks right there. That's going to be a big telling sign right there. Yeah, look at people freaking out. All right, so it hit that line and it's bounced right off of it. Oh, and whatnot. Let's see if they can push it. If they can push it under there. Oh, they pushed it under there. Oh, that's ugly. So anyway, you see what's going on right here and people are freaking out. Now, you know, you'll get euphoria for those who are short. You know, it doesn't matter. It, it is so inconsequential. And this is just the normal movement of the markets, I guess you can say. Um, but let's go over, you know, the risks that we face when we're trading and whatnot and what we're doing, uh, because that's important for you to know. Now, let's get back to the leverage and so forth and the risks that we face. Everybody has asked for, as you can see by this, this picture right here, overwhelmingly to have higher leverage, which basically means you'll make more profits in time versus um, losses, or, you know, uh, and I went along with this. But now that a position has been built up that has not been positive in our favor yet, it very well could be in the near future, but nonetheless, um, people get upset. Um, I'm doing what was asked of me by others. And uh, we're nowhere near liquidation or have any losses. So I don't know what the issue is other than the fact that we could have losses. And that's because we're above 1x. And, you know, if we kept it under 1x, and uh, we would be at 0.70 of one Bitcoin. There's no way to get liquidated because you would only be using 70% uh, of your, your uh, Bitcoin that you have. So another 20-something uh, percent would be free and would be what you own. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. That's because of the additional leverage that we are using. So we do have risk. And, you know, I, I noted this before in the past, and you have to be aware that does put us at risk uh, for the way that I trade. And uh, in the future, we can amend that back down if you like, but that, that's what's there. Now, uh, you know, uh, that could work in our favor in the future and of profitability, but there is that additional risk now that we have to keep in mind. Now with the long and short accounts, that's a good idea because of the fact that you could have open positions on both sides um, and trade against each other that way. Um, but um, we'll discuss that in the future. Uh, but the major thing is for you to understand is that we do have you know, risk. You can see the bigger picture. I pointed it out. We're still looking for that drop down to the, the lines that go below all the way down to that uh, 6,000 area and we'll keep waiting for that to occur, but nothing has changed. Um, I, uh, the reactionary comments and whatnot, I'm just gonna push that off to the side and just be like, okay, and uh, ignore it because it has nothing to really do with my trading or what's going on in the marketplace. And I hope you understand that. But other than that, I will uh, talk to you guys later. I'll update you again this weekend, I guess, and talk to you soon, bye.